Quitty Podcast. My name is Kay and this is my podcast all about knitting. Today is July 12th. It is about 11 a.m. and it's a gorgeous day here in Havelock, North Carolina where I am coming to you from. I live here with my husband, our two sons, and our two dogs. It is summer here in the U.S. so that means that kids are out of school. We got kids in there playing games right now. Wyatt, you want to come say hi? as usual you know why it never comes to say hello um, but today we've got a lot to get through so we are just going to jump right in you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady there is also a group on Ravelry for the podcast if you just go to the groups tab and search crazy sock lady podcast it should pop right up please head over there and join us if you have not already there is always something fun going on. I've got some giveaway winners to announce today and a new giveaway to announce. We've got some knit alongs going on, just tons of fun stuff. So head over there if you have not already and join us in the group. Down below in the down bar, you can find links to everywhere that you can find me as well as links to the show notes in Ravelry. So please take advantage of that. There's also timestamps for the episode if you choose to skip ahead to a certain portion. And I will go ahead and apologize for any background noise that you hear today. It seems to be a pretty noisy day for the military base here. There have been lots of jets flying over. We have people repairing the fence next door, so we've had some noise with that. And... We've got Wyatt in here opening and closing video games, looking for a game. He's just so adorable though. So any background noise that you do here, thank you in advance for your patience. It's summer, house is a little crazy. <laughs> All right, so first we are going to announce some prize winners. We've had the Sock Crazy Cow for 2017 going on since the first of the year. We did a prize drawing for January, February, and March. And now we are doing April, May, and June. So for those three months, I went into that knit along. Um, and I will say that that knit along is any socks that you make this year other than baby socks. Head over there and enter those in. We do drawings every three months and then we will do a huge grand prize drawing at the end of the year. So for April, May, and June, we had, I drew from post 991 to 1906. That was the range of posts that we had for those three months. So that is totally insane, totally awesome. You guys are knitting socks like crazy and I'm loving it. So we have five prizes that we are going to give away today. I've already drawn all of the winners. I've got all the prizes here. So we are just going to run through those. So first up, we have a skein of yarn from Angie over at Camel City Dye Works. Things are crazy in here, you guys. <laughs> the dogs are fighting now over toy. Okay, so this is, what colorway is this? Stargazer on her Sterling base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% Stellina. So the winner for this was post 996, which is Lynn. So congratulations, Lynn. And I will go ahead and say, all of the prize winners, please just get in contact with me. Ravelry is the best place. Give me your full name and your mailing address and I will ship any prizes out to you that I have here. We have one that's winner's choice that will be number five, but any that I have here to show you, let me know your full name and mailing address. Okay, so next up we have a project bag. Still in the packaging, I won't take it out, but it is a drawstring bag from Fates Thread on Etsy. And there is a, is that a progress paper? Yes progress keeper cute little bird there so this one is post number 1374 which is Xena from England so congratulations prize number three is a skein of yarn from artistic Lily gorgeous purple you guys can't tell purple is just my favorite color and this is Ellie's grape soda on her gotta have socks fingering base and the winner for this was post number 1,295, and that is Karen from Havelock, North Carolina. Funny that I drew Karen because I know her. She lives right down the street from me, and she comes to my knit group on Friday mornings. That's how we met. Um, so yes, Karen, when you see this, let me know. I will bring it to you on Friday at knitting. So congratulations, Karen. All right, so the, let's see. Prize number four, I was gonna say the last one, but we have five, five prizes, that is insane. Okay, prize number four, this was donated 
by a viewer of the podcast and it came all the way from the UK. So we have a project bag with a fun tassel and a huge pom-pom project bag with a lot of stitch markers and progress keepers on there that are all nautical themed cute drawstring bag that does have a pocket on the inside and then when she sent this she also sent a package of goodies for y'all as well so the winner for this is post number 1858 and that is penny from texas so congratulations penny you have won this adorable little set all right, prize number five I do not have here to show you today. It will be winner's choice. So Jenny from Mountain State Stitches has so generously donated a project bag from her shop. So what will happen if the winner of this will get in touch with me, I will give Jenny your information and you two can contact each other and figure out what bag you want and she will ship that out to you. She has quite a few cute ones in her shop and she is working on getting some more added as well that are absolutely adorable. So the winner for the Mountain State Stitches project bag is post number 1,881, and that is Christine from Arizona. So congratulations, Christine. That will wrap up our prize giveaways for the Sock Crazy Cow for the past three months. Congratulations to all five of our winners. If y'all will please get in touch with me. Um, prizes that I have here, I will get shipped out, and then the one with Jenny, I will pass along your information to her so that she can contact you. Okay, just a few other administrative things to get through here this morning before we move on to all of the yummy nitty goodness. So we do have a few swapple swaps in the group right now, two to be exact, and the first one is through Yarn Enabler. The second one is Angie of Camel City Dye Works. Both of those do still have spots available. Head over to the Ravelry group to see all of the information and details for those. Knit alongs. We have the Sock Crazy Cow, which I mentioned before. We also have the Mini Stripe Cowl Cow, <laughs> and that one will wrap up on July 31st. Um, when I checked yesterday, we had, I wrote it down here, we had five done. I think there's been one added so far, so I think that'll, I think there was just one. So I think we've had six finished objects so far in that, and they are all gorgeous. I finished mine. We're going to show it in finished objects. It is a super fun pattern by Angie Kimmel, who's also the dyer behind Camel City Dye Works, and she will be offering two skeins of yarn as prizes for that. So head over if you're a pretty fast knitter, you have plenty of time. Even if you're not, I feel like it's a fairly simple, easy, mindless project that you could totally get done by the end of the month. So head over and check out that pattern. Angie has also offered a coupon code for the podcast. So that is CSL15, and that will get you 15% off through the end of this month. Speaking of coupon codes, we do have a coupon codes thread in the group that has been crazy, totally crazy, with all of the coupon codes that have been added in that. So make sure that you head over there if you're looking to do any shopping for yarns, bags, you want to find some new shops, head over there. We have some really good coupon codes that y'all should take advantage of. I did want to mention Just Stash July that is going on right now, and I've had so many people that are participating in this. There is a thread open in the Ravelry group. Um, there will not be any huge prizes for that being drawn, but I will probably do a few just randomly draw and have the people that are chosen pick a pattern of their choice maybe. I don't know. We'll do something, but definitely head over there if you want to participate in Just Stash July. I've done so good so far. I have not bought any yarn this month. I'm pretty proud of myself. Everything that I'm knitting right now is from Stash and it just feels great. So thank you to everyone that is participating in that. It's a lot of fun. We're encouraging each other, um, sharing our victories and um, helping each other through the little road bumps that, <laughs> that can happen when you try to do something like Just Stash July. Oh, and I forgot to mention in knit alongs, I am thinking about doing a new cowl since we have the mini stripe cowl coming to an end the end of this month. I was thinking August 1st starting a new knit along. Now we do have the sock crazy knit along going on. This would also be a sock knit along, but it would be for socks knit as you've never knit them before. So trying out a new technique, maybe you've never tried DPNs or you've never done an afterthought heel or a short row heel anything that is different from how you normally do socks. Maybe you normally do vanilla and you've never done a patterned sock. It could be anything at all. Something to kind of help us to branch out a little bit and try something new and exciting because lately we're going to talk in works in progress about some different things that I've tried lately with socks that I've never done before that have just made me 
I mean, obviously I love knitting socks and I'm always excited about knitting them, but it just made me like crazy excited about sock knitting. So I'm thinking August 1st, we will start that knit along. Let me know down below in the comments or in the Ravelry group, what you guys would think about that knit along. And obviously you could double dip. You could always double dip with my knit alongs. Um, you could enter them into this and the sock crazy, any other sock knit alongs, anything that you can enter them in, enter them in, of course. Um, but let me know what you guys think about that knit along. I thought we were done with administrative stuff, but we have one last thing and it is a super exciting thing. So I noticed yesterday evening that I have reached 2,500 subscribers. What? That's really, truly insane. That blows my mind that I have reached 2,500 subscribers. So of course, we are going to have a giveaway for this. I have got three things, well, four, because one is kind of a combination prize um, that we are going to give away. So what is going to happen is in the Ravelry group, I will open up three different threads because I want y'all to be able to get something that you want. So if you don't maybe want the pattern prize, you can enter for the other thing, or you can enter in all three. Please feel free to do that. So two are going to be patterns that have been given, gifted to me and then given to the podcast as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put up the pictures here to show you guys the patterns. The first one is a sock pattern and it is Country Roads and that is by Nordic Stitches um, and her name is Lily. And the second one is Who Wears the Crown Shawl and that is by Kim Briggio and that is Kim of Not Your Average Knits Podcast. I talked about her last podcast or the one before I believe. Um, I'm really enjoying watching Kim's podcast and she designed this shawl and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so both of these, they gifted them to me and then offered to give one away on the podcast as well. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. Um, I think they're gorgeous and I'm really looking forward to knitting both of them. I actually, for the socks, have the yarn kicked up and ready to go. I just have not gotten a chance to start it yet. I think it's gonna be perfect. Um, many of you probably know I'm from West Virginia. Country Roads um, by John Denver is one of my absolute favorite of all time songs. Of course, I think if you're from West Virginia, it has to be one of your favorite songs. So I'm excited to knit those because immediately when I saw that, that's what it reminded me of. And then the shawl I'm going to be knitting as well. I just cannot decide on the yarn. This Just Stashed July is challenging me in kind of a good way and making me go out of my comfort zone and pick different colors, but I can't decide what I want to use for this shawl. So that will be to come when I finally pick my colors. But thank you so much ladies for donating those. So I will open up an individual thread for the socks and then one for the shawl. So enter in one, both, whatever you would like to do. And then we also have some yarn and a bag that we are going to give away. Let me pull them out here. The yarn I've shown before, sorry for all the noise. The yarn I've shown before, and this was donated by Emily over at Wool Fiend. Y'all know that I love her. And this is her 80-20 sock, 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon in the winter is coming colorway. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the purple and the black. So we've got this. And then as well, I'm going to give away a bag, which I just got. This was originally going to be in the mail section, but I decided to go ahead and add it in here since we're gonna do it for a prize. So this came from Erica over at the Scrappy Thread. And I just have to show you guys this card. Look at that. This is from Susan B. Anderson's Bear Wool Co. And I love this card. She's knitting her sweater and her socks. It is just so cute. So I had to show this. Um, and then she also sent this package, you guys. How cute is this? So there's a notions pouch and then a drawstring bag. And look at that. The drawstring is a ruler. How cute is that? So she gifted me one as well. And I will show you guys in detail all the ins and outs of that in just a bit when we come across it in whips because I had to use it immediately because it's gorgeous. Okay, so we've got that as another prize. That will be in a separate thread. So make sure you head over to the Ravelry group and enter into those. And thank you guys so much. 2,500 subscribers just completely blows my mind. 
I was excited when I had like 10 subscribers when I started this. So to think that now I have 2,500, it really just makes my day. Doing this makes me so happy. I enjoy it so much. I feel so thankful and blessed that I get to do this and that y'all are interested in watching. So thank you again and be sure to head over and enter into the giveaway. All right, now that finally does bring us to the end of administrative business. So now we have some finished objects to talk about. The first thing that I'm going to show you is my mini stripe cowl. And this is the one that we have the knit along going on for. And I finished mine and I love it. Look at this, you guys. I'll go ahead and try it on for y'all. Now this, I'm just realizing I did not even look at this. This is so bad. That's awful. They're, they are woven in and then I blocked it and I did not sniff them. <laughs> oh well, Ooh, it smells good. Okay, so I finished this fairly fast and it is such a fun, easy knit, you guys. It is just enough to really keep you interested because you're striping and you're doing plain sections and textured sections. It is gorgeous. Oh, it is so soft. Okay, so for this, go ahead and take it off and I'll show you the collars. Crazy hair now. So the top part and the bottom part were done in Malabrigo sock in the pearl colorway. And then all the other collars that you see were a mini set from Angie over at Camel City Dye Works. And it was the cozy mini set, I believe was the name of it. So I did all of the seven stripes here from minis in that set and I love it. I think they tie together perfect. They look great. It blocked out so nice. I cannot recommend this enough. I'm definitely going to be doing a few more of these for Christmas gifts, but I think this one's mine. I think I'm keeping this one. I'm being selfish with it because I love it so much. So I definitely recommend that if you're looking for something fun, fast, mindless, something for a gift, head over and check out Angie Kimmel's mini stripe cow. All right, next up, I'm just gonna pull them out here as I see them, because I've got quite a few things to show you. Oh, I already showed those last time. <laughs> Maybe I don't have quite as many as I thought. Okay, so next up, I have some baby items. I've mentioned on the last few podcasts, the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast is doing a charity knitting drive. She's collecting baby items for a pregnancy crisis center out where she is in California right now. Um, she's staying with her parents. She's getting IVF done. Head over to her podcast or her group on Ravelry if you're interested in more information and donating to that. So I finished, I showed last time, these two hats. I finished another hat. And I showed this as a work in progress last time. I did a sweater. The sizing, I mentioned last time, I did not check gauge and the sizing. It just looks a little funky to me. So I am not sure that I'm going to donate this. I may just save it and use this for something else. Um, but I am going to donate the hat that I made to match because it came out right. <laughs> but since that sweater did not work out, I made this. And that sizing looks much better. This is the flax and this was two. Flax sweater by 10 can knits. Excuse me, I got fluff on my nose and it's itchy. Okay, so the flax sweater by 10 can knits, it's a free pattern. This is the smallest size, I believe zero to six months size. And look how adorable it is. So for this one, I did not do the garter panel down the sleeves and I obviously did a short sleeve because I just thought that would be adorable. The yarn that I used is Knit Pick Stroll Fingering. The blue is Sapphire Heather and the gray dove heather. I was blanking and I don't think I wrote it down. So sapphire heather and dove heather. And I'm really happy with how it came out. I blocked it yesterday and it's just so cute. I told my husband I want one exactly like this in my size. I love the collars, the stripes, the short sleeves. I love everything about it. So this will be sent out to Jessica along with the hats and I'm hoping to maybe get one or two more hats done. We'll have to see. Speaking of hats, my last finished object is a hat that I whipped up. You guys haven't even seen this yet. This was just completely started and finished since the last podcast. 
This is the Cozy Head Happy Head hat by Hohi Locatelli. How cute is it? This, again, like the mini striped cow, this was fast and easy. It does have the cables all the way around the hat, but look how big they are. And you're really only needing to cable, I think like three times throughout the pattern. So I definitely would recommend this for a hat for yourself or for a gift. I'll try it on here. I'm not, I don't feel like I look that good in hats, but <laughs> I'll try it on here. So I thought about adding a pom-pom to this, but this is actually going to go to my sister Cassie for Christmas. I don't think she watches this, so I don't think I have to worry about that. But when I was talking to her about hats, she said that she wouldn't really like a hat with a pom-pom. So I'm not going to add one to this. So this will go to Cassie. One Christmas gift done because she loves this teal collar that's in here. So I think this will be perfect to give to her for Christmas. The yarn that I used for this was Malabrigo Rios in the Lotus colorway. And I picked this up at the Salty Sheep in Swansboro, North Carolina. They carry Malabrigo and I just love going over to their Malabrigo wall. I just love, Malabrigo is probably one of my favorite yarns. It's so soft. It gives such great stiff, stiff, stitch definition. Just look how pretty. It is so nice. Yeah, I, I have been wanting to do another sweater. I've only done one sweater for myself and I've been wanting to do another one so bad. And I think the next one I probably do will more than likely be out of Malabrigo. It's just too pretty. So that is it for finished objects. Now I have three works in progress to show you. Do not be fooled. I do not only have three works in progress, but these are the ones that have got the most work and that's what we're gonna talk about today. <laughs> oh, and I've got some coffee to drink today. Dunkin' Donuts. Why well, I had a doctor's appointment this morning, so we've been out running errands. So I grabbed a coffee and I've got my West Virginia cup cozy that I made a few years ago, I think. So yeah, just my normal Duncan, one mocha, one skim, extra ice. <laughs> All right, first work in progress. Let's see, let's chat about this one. And I've got this, you guys have seen this so many times. This is my Daisy Girl and Company bag. I'm going down to the Salty Sheep tomorrow and I know last time I was there and I told you guys this, she has, she's carrying these bags now and she had a floral, another floral print that I might have to get. We'll see. So yeah, Daisy Girl and Company love this bag. In here I have a pair of socks that I started that I am completely obsessed with. First, let's talk about the yarn. So let's see, let me find the tag. This is the main collar. Hope it doesn't get really blown out. Oh, I think we're good, it's not too bad. It is very bright and speckly and these shades, I mean the purple that's in here is definitely my collar. Some of the blue specks are, but I normally do not do bright, bright, but I am loving this. So this is the main collar and this is by Chili Knits and this is her strong sock base and the collar is Imagination. This is my very first time using Connie's yarn. I ordered this a while back. I've just never used it. It's just been sitting there gorgeous, but I just have not used it. So that's the main collar for heels and toes. I'm using Knit Picks Stroll Fingering in the Blue Topaz colorway. And I've got one done. Yeah, one. Now the pattern that I'm doing, let's show it first. This is the left sock. So this will be on the outside of the left leg and foot. Just look at that. Okay, I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna hold it so you guys can see the front of it. So the pattern is by Naughty Gnome Crafts and that is Sarah Peterson. And she is doing a four month Harry Potter Magical Maladies Sock Club. So I bought the club and this is the first sock. So look at that. Starts out with your cable detail up here and then it goes all the way down and around to the other side of the foot. And then you've got this fun pattern 
pattern on the other side. You can see the back. And just look how gorgeous that yarn is. Oh my gosh, this is definitely not my normal. I don't do like more neon collars, but I'm kind of loving this. I have had a lot of fun doing it. Okay, so the heel. I did not follow the heel that was in the pattern. It is a short row heel, but on another pair of socks, maybe I should have shown them first. I had done Mina Phillips German short row heel that's in her sock pattern. That was the very first time that I've ever done a German short row heel. I've done Fish Lips Kiss heel, heel flap and gusset, which tends to be my favorite, um, afterthought heels, but I've never done a German short row heel. So I thought I'm going to try Mina's. I'm going to do garter. So I did it on the other sock and I thought I'm going to do it on this one as well because I really enjoyed it. Now I did do the heel flap adjustment that Mina Phillip has. It makes just a little mini heel flap and then you decrease some gusset stitches um, and she has that pattern available. But I really love the look of it and it fits great. And I did it all garter, just follow the pattern but knit every row instead of having any pearl rows. So I did that for the heel flap and for the heel. And there we go. I'm so happy with this. So this is one of the things I was talking about with the knit along that I would like to do for August. Trying socks in some way that you've never knit them before. I tried the German short row heel, did it in all garter. So I feel like that was two things I've never done before. And this type of detail on a sock, I have never done before. I've done patterned socks, but never anything like this. I don't know that I've ever cabled in a sock and I cabled without a cable needle. What? How many new things is that? That's like four new things in this sock. So I am so excited about this sock. Now I did this on US zero, um, two millimeter, which is not my normal size, but that's what was recommended for the pattern. So I did that and then I just went up in stitch count to the next size bigger than I would normally do. And it fits great. So I would definitely recommend any Harry Potter fans or anyone looking for maybe more of a patterned sock that you head over and check out Sarah's Harry Potter Magical Maladies Sock Club. So this is month number one. I will do the right sock now, which will have the cable starting on the opposite side and then coming down towards the center. So it started, I actually did start it. I've just got the cuff done though. So probably not even really worth showing. I did these on high, high sharps, US zero high, high sharps, which means my finger has gotten some damage. So like I said, I've just got the cuff done, ready to get going on the pattern. I got the cuff done. I finished the toe on this yesterday morning, started the cuff as soon as I could so that there would be no chance of second sock syndrome. If I had it going already, I was less likely to put it down and not, not pick it up and start it. Okay. So next work in progress, another pair of socks. It's all about the socks today in works in progress. Oh, and I have this. I need to show it first. I need to show my bag. Look at this. So this is my bag from Erica at the Scrappy Thread. And I cannot recommend these bags enough. Look how cute. And look at that. Like no digging for a ruler because you've got one right here that is perfect. <laughs> I just love that little detail that she has. Okay, so look at this fabric. She's got her tag there. And look how cute, it's knitted fabric. They look like knit stitches with hearts. And I love that fabric, but my absolute favorite fabric on this bag is probably this right here. I'm just loving floral lately. And I love that she has just the plain linen fabric on the bottom and then she's got the different on the top and the inside is gray polka dots. I want to use this bag for every project right now. It is just so cute. So we also have, and this is in the prize package as well, a little notions pouch. And look, there's more of the fabric that I love so much. I just cannot, the time and attention to detail that went into these blows my mind. Look how pretty that is. 
And then she's even got, she's tied it in to match the drawstrings on the bag with those. And look at this. Look how cute that is. And this is the perfect size. I have got quite a bit in here. Oh, the fabric in here was cute too. I don't, you guys probably won't be able to see it very well, but it's a little sheep. I mean, I've got scissors. I do have a ruler in here, stitch markers, a row counter, all kinds of stuff. And it fits perfect. And you can lay it flat and open it up, see what you've got in there. Head over and check out Erica shop because these are just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so in here, I have got my July socks. As I've mentioned every month for the entire year, pretty much. Yeah, the entire year. I'm doing the Naughty Knitwits Sock It Year Long Knit Along. And then Mina Phillip has the New York Sock Club collection out. So I am participating in that as well and entering my socks into that. So these are the July socks and the pattern this month with Mina is the Yorkville socks. And I am using Lolo Did It Breakfast Club, another stash yarn. I've had this one for a while. I think I bought it for a shawl and then decided not to use it for the shawl. So it's just been hanging out. So it's perfect for socks. I have some gray left over from my mini stripe cowl. This was part of the cozy mini set that was from Angie and I had a good bit left after I had used those. So I thought I will use up this for heels for these socks. So the first one, I'm only on the first sock, <laughs> only on the first one. And I had a little bit of an uh oh, I'll show you the sock first and then we'll talk about what happened. So here we go. Let's give you a close up of that pattern. It is fun. I have loved every single pattern that Mina has had out in this collection. I've loved all of Mina's sock patterns. They're all just amazing. So for this one, I'm doing US1 2.25 millimeter, my usual um, 64 stitches. I did a 20 row cuff. Then I've just followed the pattern down the front of the leg. You can see how the yarn works up on the back in stockinette. It's a really fun colorway. And I was worried that it might be too busy for the pattern and it might kind of hide the pattern, but I think it shows up really nice. I think it looks good. So for this, I did the German short row heel that was in the pattern and I did it in garter with the mini heel flap adjustment because I do have kind of a high instep. So the short row heels don't always work for me, but Mina's a genius, we all know this. And with her mini heel flap adjustment, it works out perfect. So what happened? My little uh-oh with this. This was the first sock I did the German short row heel on and the first one I done the heel flap adjustment on. So I had done the heel flap adjustment, which is right along here. The first time I did it, I did it in stockinette. I wanted to do the heel and garter, but for some reason I didn't do the heel flap and garter. I had done it in stockinette and it just looked funny. Well, then I was going down the foot. I was like, 30 some rows, which is like halfway through with the foot for a sock for me. And right along here, I had done a few rows in stockinette for the heel as well. Why? I don't know. I have no idea what I was thinking. No idea why I had done that. But I just kept thinking, this just looks funny. Like, what have I done? <laughs> why did I do that? What was I thinking? And I don't know, when I went to count rows for the foot, it was messing up my counts. I kept counting it wrong. And I'm like, okay, it's bugging me this bad. I'm just taking it out and doing the heel again. So I put my stitches back in up here or put my needles in. I'm sorry, I took my needles out, put them back in up here, pulled everything out, started the heel again. I got the heel flap done and was three rows into the German short row heel and realized my stitch count was off. Well, when I picked up the stitches, I had picked up 31 on the back and 33 on the front. So one was on the wrong side. So I had to take it out again and start it again. <laughs> it was so bad. I was kind of like, maybe I should just go to bed. This was last night that I did all this. So I didn't, I stayed up and I watched Golden Girls and I got through the heel so I could show you guys today. So yeah, it's going along. I've got a 
Progress Keeper there marking where I started the foot. And I think this one is from the Gnome Knitter. It was a gift. It's a cute little coffee cup and I think it's from Gnome Knitter. She has gorgeous ones. And I am using Chow Goo needles for this. Do y'all see this? I have only used Chow Goo needles for socks once before and I don't know why it was a while back but I didn't like them for Magic Loop. I take that back. I have Chow Goo 8 inch that I've used many times and I like those but I was not crazy about them for Magic Loop for some reason but this time I'm loving it and now these are the only needles I've been wanting to use lately because while they're pointy they don't tear my finger up like my high highs do especially those US Zero high highs. I feel like those should come with the warning label because they're very dangerous. Last work in progress for today is yet again another pair of socks. Like I said, it's all about the socks today. That's how it's been lately, all about the socks. So this one is in this adorably gorgeous bag from Stitching Plaza. George Ann just hit it out of the park with this, her and Meg both with this kit. This was their um, Christmas in July, Doctor, the Doctor's Ugly Christmas Sweater Kit. Look how cute it is. And I'm using the yarn that came with the kit. This is Meg's contribution to the kit, her Doctor's Ugly Christmas Sweater yarn. For this, just wait for it. Let me get the needle cozy off here. You ready for this? Look at this. I'm knowing afterthought everything socks. So on the top here, I've got, I didn't bring it over, but this was cascade, I'm blanking. It's a cascade heritage solids. I don't remember what the colorway name was. Um, but I did this for the cuff on one end. So I have worked up right here is my marker for my heel. And then here's the marker for where I will split and do the toes. Now I'm working up to where I will mark for the heel on the second sock. As you can tell, I have quite a few markers on here. I've marked every 20 rows. And then this is the kind of my first marker for the next section. They make sense to me. Nobody else could probably pick this up and figure it out, but the markers make sense to me <laughs> where they are. <laughs> but then I've marked with three along the back, so it makes it easier to pick up for the heels and keep your stitches. Um, when I do afterthought heels, I mark the first, the last, and the middle stitch for the row. Just so I know I'm picking up the back side stitches. Just makes it easy for me and easy to remember and see them. So yes, this is my first time doing Afterthought Everything Socks. There is a pattern. I'll put the name down here and link it in the show notes. Um, I'm just, I have the pattern. I've done the Afterthought heels. I'll probably read through the pattern for what they say to do for the toes. But I think I could probably just kind of wing it and figure it out. Hopefully, we'll see. But what I'm planning on doing is I've done the red for the cuff on this. So I'll do a green heel on this sock and a red toe. Then for the next sock, I will do green for heels and toes and a red heel. Switch it up. But I really like how this yarn has kind of spiraled. Um, it was like a micro stripe when Meg did it, but her stitch count and her needle size is different than mine. And I started one with what she uses, but with me and my gauge, it just was not working. So, I mean, it was working and it probably would have fit, but I did not like the fabric I was getting. So I just went with my normal and it spirals and I don't mind, I love it. I think this yarn is amazing. And it's funny, I started this, this July 2nd, I think. And I was like, oh, these are my Christmas and July socks. And they kind of look like 4th of July socks. So it worked out for both. It kind of reminds me of fireworks as well, especially with the red up here. I think once I do the green, it'll make it look more Christmassy, but I just thought it was funny. I'm like, oh, well, Christmas in July, 4th of July works for both. Got all the bases covered this month. So yes, I'm enjoying these. They've been a lot of fun. It's so nice. I love the afterthought heel for the simplicity of the fact that you can just keep knitting. You don't have to stop and do a heel and then have a sock that's maybe not at a good spot to work on. You can just keep going. 
So I'm really enjoying it. And I will of course keep you guys updated on the progress of when I go to cut into those. <laughs> What'll happen then is I'll probably take some video and um, post it on Instagram and maybe pop it into the podcast if it's anything interesting to see. And I think one of my August new sock things, I've done two at a time before. So I guess this won't really be a new technique, but I'm gonna try two at a time socks with the afterthought everything. So my thought process behind that is I can have two cakes of yarn, two separate pairs of socks going, two at a time, and then just do two long huge tubes and then go in and cut in for everything. Does that sound kind of crazy? Does that make sense? Makes sense in my head. <laughs> Maybe it's kind of crazy to do it, but I'm gonna give it a go. I. I don't know, I didn't like magic, or not magic loop. I didn't like two at a time socks before because I wasn't crazy about taking them places. I think it's easier just to work on one simple sock. But if I do that, it could just be my at home socks that I work on. So I don't know, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm really excited about socks and trying new things. And I think another thing that I'm gonna try for a new to me technique is two circular needles. I don't know if there's like a specific name for that method of knitting things in the rounds, but I'm gonna try two circular needles and knit socks that way. So yes, I've just been excited about trying new things with socks. These Afterthought Everything socks are new to me. I have done a heel, so I guess it's just semi new. The toe is gonna to be a new thing. The German short row heel, all done in garter. Lots of new things, cabling in socks. I have just been really excited to try new things lately and branch out a little bit from um, kind of a vanilla rut that I was feeling in. I was only kind of doing one pattern sock a month, which was fun and vanilla is great, don't get me wrong. I have my Afterthought Everything or in vanilla and I have another pair for Eric going that's in vanilla and they are great to pick up and take with me wherever we go and work on them and not have to look at a pattern. So don't get me wrong, I'm not done with vanilla socks. There will be plenty more vanilla socks coming in the future but I'm having fun just switching it up and trying some new patterns and techniques and heels. I just think it keeps it interesting and fun. And I hope that you guys will join me next month for the knit along and try some new techniques as well. Now we have a segment that is kind of like, it's like a long lost segment. Where have the scrappy projects been for the past month? They've been there. They haven't been worked on quite as much, but they've been there. They just have not been shown. They've, they're so sad that they have not gotten to be shown. So today we are finally going to get scrappy. First, I will show you my cozy memories. I have two scrappy projects going right now and a third one that I will talk about in a bit if we have time. That isn't started yet, but it's a want to slash need to start soon. Because you can never have too many projects going, especially scrappy ones, right? Okay, so Cozy Memories has gotten some work lately. I have marked everything with markers that is new that you have not seen before. I will not go through every single square because that would just take forever, but here we go. It has gotten very big, you guys. And I don't know how big it's gonna be. I'm just gonna keep going. So I started, and I think I've shown it since I started doing this. This is kind of gonna be my center point for the blanket, this progress keeper right here. And see how they're going in different directions. So I've started doing that. I will show you this square right here. This one. This yarn, it is a homespun house. Weasley is King, I believe is the name of it. This is my very, very first time using Homespun House. I just got a little mini of it. I'll tell you in a minute where it's from, but this is, Homespun House is on like my bucket list of yarns that I want to try. I love Homespun House yarns, um, all of her colorways. So this was so much fun getting to add this into my blanket. And yeah, like I said, it's on my bucket list. One day I will get some. But this mini um, was from Amber of Maker's Haven when she was visiting and she um, came to the house for the day, she was working on some socks in this colorway. And she, while she was working on her socks from the other end of the 
the cake she took off a little mini for me and I put it in my blanket while we were sitting there chatting so this square will definitely hold some special memories of the time that that Amber came to visit and that's just the fun about this blanket you can go through and pick out different squares that maybe someone special gave you the yarn or you made something for someone special or you made something for yourself. I mean, you can remember all of your different projects that you've done. So I think that is just part of the fun with the cozy memories. And the pattern that I'm using for mine is the Coziest Memory by Kimber Ray. I wrote down my needle size. I'm using a US one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter. And I cast on 40 stitches for my squares. So 20 on each side. So there are fairly tiny squares. Next scrappy project is my corner to corner crochet blanket. And I've got it in a bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. And I love this bag, the Knit You a Heart bag with the polka dots on the inside. You guys have seen this before, but and she started a podcast with her friend Carrie. So definitely check out its Knitters Gotta Knit podcast. I watched the first episode and I really enjoyed it. And the blanket, here it is. It's gotten pretty big too. I don't even think I can get back far enough to show it all. Yeah, it's pretty big. But it's so much fun. I don't know how big this one's going to be either. either. Neither of these. I don't know how big they're going to be. I'm just going to keep going. Till I decide that's enough. And then with these, you start out here, you're increasing. And then once you get to kind of the width you want, you can start decreasing back down to a point. So I would say here fairly soon, I'll start decreasing back down. This is just going to be, as well as my cozy memories, um, blankets that are in the living room on the back of the couch, or I have a little ladder in there for handmade blankets. So it'll get hung on the ladder and can be used by whoever in the living room. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this one. And for this one, I'm using a crochet hook, a 3.5 millimeter, and I'm sure I probably have it in here. And this is my favorite crochet hooks, a tulip crochet hook, 3.5 millimeter, which is a size E. Last thing that we have to chat about today is stuff that came in the mail. And I have quite a stack here beside me. I debated on saving some of this for next podcast, but I didn't want it to start piling up on me. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get through everything today. I just don't want this podcast to start being something that's like, oh, look at all the stuff I got. So I'm going to go through it all just because some of it has been donated and I do not want that stuff to sit and not be shown off because I feel so honored when people entrust me with showing off their yarns or their items. It just, it means so much to me to be able to do that and to know that other makers are trusting me with their items and with showing them off and donating prizes to the podcast. And I appreciate that so much. So I do not want to let those items sit and not be shown off as soon as I get them. Um, so yeah, we are going to go through the pile here today. So a few of these things, two of them are things that I bought, but they have, were not bought in July. I want to clarify that for Just Stash July. These things were purchased before Just Stash July started, but they have came since the last time I podcasted. So the first one... The rest of the Felici. I think I mentioned on the last one I had ordered the remainder of the new colorways and I did get those. I'll just show one of them. I got two of each to do socks. Um, this is Sonora Sunset, Captain Nemo, Witch's Brew, Spring Blooms, and candy shop. So when they released the Felici, they released 10 colorways, about five the first time and five the second go round. So I now have a lot of socks that need to be knit. In other words, <laughs> I need to get on the ball with my sock knitting. So that was the first thing that I ordered that came. The second thing that I ordered 
is a fairly new, I was gonna say new to me dyer, but she's a new dyer and I think she is amazing. She is someone that y'all need to be following, y'all need to be watching because she is up and coming and I think she's going to take this fiber world by storm. She's already started to, I feel like she, her colorways, stunning. So this is Taylor at Fiber for the People. Here is her card. Definitely check her out. She has the Wool Needles Hands podcast as well. She's fabulous. So I, I went on there. I originally wanted to order cactus flower. That's what it was. And I still want it. Oh my gosh. Cactus flower is gorgeous. I love that colorway. So I originally wanted to order that. And I went on there to order that. And this caught my eye and had to come to my house. So with the order, she sent along some of the little light bulb stitch markers, which are my favorite, and a minty green organic tea. I've never tried this brand, but I love mint and I love green tea, so no, I'm gonna love it. This colorway, you guys, this is Hyper Color Shirt on Taylor's favorite base, which is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. How pretty is this? I love, I don't think the green is picking up properly. Maybe when I go to edit, it'll show a little bit more, but when I'm looking at it on the camera right now, it's not picking up as green as it is. I love her labels as well. So it came with a mini, which is eggplant on the same base. Matches perfectly. I cannot wait to do socks with this. The mini is a 80 yard, 20 gram mini. So now we have some things that have been sent for the podcast. So the first one that I'm going to show came from Sheila over at Bigfoot Fibers and Sheila is amazing. She has sent prizes for the podcast before. Um, so thank you so much, Sheila, for donating to the podcast. So she sent some yarn and we're okay. Finding everything in my bag here. So the first thing that she sent was a gift for me, and this is on her Superior Sock Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino in Purple People Eater. And then the Mini is on her Yeti Sock Base, which is an 80-20 blend, and it is a Purple Rain. So she thought, I, she asked if there was any colorway or just any color in general that I would like to have, and I said purple, I've just been purple crazy lately. So purple, of course. So this is what she sent. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yet. I was thinking it might be gorgeous in a shawl, but I might use this for socks and then use the one with nylon for heels and toes. I'm not sure yet. But the purple in this is absolutely stunning. So gorgeous. So she sent this along for me and then for a prize for the podcast, she sent on her super squishy sparkle sock, a meet me at the ball. Oh, look at that sparkle. So gorgeous. And there's also a set of locking stitch markers on there. And again, that is Bigfoot Fibers on Etsy. And then she sent, there's a card for the winner and she also sent some of this for me and for the winner as well and it is a unicorn fiber rinse which I've never used so I am really excited to give this a try. So this will be an upcoming prize for the podcast. Next thing I received a package from Amanda at Dire Bear Yarns and Amanda she sent some chocolate it's already been half eaten it's in the kitchen but she sent this and I have to show this look how cute this is and it's perfect I have been wanting a big tote bag like this to put some knitting project bags in when we go places and because I have a few big bags but I wanted something smaller that I could throw just one or two project bags and then my wallet and things in and take with us. So this is gonna be great to use. And this is Danica Studio Tote Bag. Amanda dyes gorgeous yarn. She also has a podcast as well, so be sure to check that out. She sent these beauties. 
This one's gonna be a giveaway. It's gonna go in the prize drawer back here. So this will be upcoming on the podcast. And this colorway is a peach sangria and then a Dahlia mini. Look how pretty that is. And she's also included some teas and different things in there as well. This will make some gorgeous socks. And then she asked me to pick a colorway from her shop. So this is what I chose. Let me get it out here. And this is the Dawn Will Come is what this one is. This is gonna have to be cast on soon, I think, because that's just so pretty. Oh, and there's a rainbow progress keeper. Can you see that? So cute. And then the mini is Lavender Sky. So there we go, those together. Yep, that's gonna be pretty. And again, this is Dire Bear Yarns. So thank you so much, Amanda, for sending that and donating to the podcast. I have one more thing I wanted to show that is something that I've purchased. So I was at Walmart one day and I just happened to be walking by the craft aisle and I always kind of glance through and they had the light bulb stitch markers, which those seem to be the ones that I reach for when I'm for, for socks when I'm counting my rows. They're just easy to slide in. They don't add a lot of weight and bulk to the sock. So when I'm counting my rows, that's what I reach for. And here is the tag that was on these in case you go looking for them. And they were in a little bag, hooked on there. And there's 100 of them. They came in this cute little case. Look at that. And it just pops right off and you've got a ton of light bulb stitch markers. Now I did order some of these off of Amazon as well. Fairly recently, within the past few months, I ordered a set of them, but I just feel like I can never have enough because I have them in each project bag. They're everywhere. They're all over the place. So I thought that would be fun to mention. If you're looking for those and you don't want to have to order any online, check your local Walmart. They may have some. I received a couple very sweet packages from viewers of the podcast, friends on Instagram that just made my heart so happy, you guys. So the first one that I'm going to show you, um, I won't mention who any of them are from because I did not ask permission to say. So uh, just know that they were from viewers of the podcast, sweet, sweet people on Instagram. And know that I've thanked you all, but know that you just made my day when I received these packages. These are so kind of you guys. So the first one is a skein of yarn and the dyer of this is Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns. I've never used this yarn that I think I have anyways. This is a self-striping Gryffindor colorway. And I am a Gryffindor. I was sorted into Gryffindor um, on Pottermore, but I have never done any Gryffindor socks, which is totally crazy. So this is going to be Gryffindor socks. I'm probably gonna cast these on for August, maybe wait and cast them on for September because I kind of feel like Gryffindor going back to school. I don't know, they may wait until September, but probably August if I just cannot wait. So for um, Mint, Rain, Mint Rain Yarns, this is their Twist Sock Base, which is an 80-20 um, Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. And I just think these are going to be perfect Gryffindor socks. I am so excited to work these up. I received a book in the mail and I'm so excited about a project in this book. So the book is Knit Along. It is Celebrating the Tradition of Knitting Together by Larissa Brown and Martin John Brown. And this book definitely has some really fun projects, fun stories about knitting groups and um, different knit along projects. But there is one in particular that I cannot wait to start. I've seen it a few times on different podcasts and things. And this is the Barn Raising Quilt. 
let me see here because I don't want to give away anything in the book. So there is the quilt. And here's another picture. Look how pretty that is. So this is going to be my next scrappy project, I believe. I just love that. I cannot wait to start it. it I'm definitely itching to cast this on, but I'm trying to resist for just a bit. I feel like lately my works in progress have gotten a bit out of control and I did so good for a while with not starting new things. And now, yeah, I've been kind of bad lately. Okay, so next thing that I'm going to show, I got a message from a viewer. It was someone that recently won a prize on the podcast and they wanted to send me a thank you, which was so not necessary. And I told them, you do not have to do that. I am just so thankful that people enjoy the podcast and are participating in the knit alongs and the different things going on and just getting to connect with all of the viewers um, through Ravelry or Instagram or anything of that nature. I'm just so thankful for that. And that is thank you enough. Trust me, it just, it warms my heart to know that people are enjoying the podcast. But she wanted to send along a, an even bigger thank you. So she lives in Germany and she sent, first I'm going to show you this because it's just so cute. A little postcard with a note on it. She sent some candies, which are half eaten in the kitchen, <laughs> some gummy bears. And then she also sent some sock yarn and I'm not going to show it all, but I'm going to show you two. I'm super excited about all of them, but two that I am like over the moon excited about. I have never used this brand of yarn. I've heard of it, but I've never used it, but I love those colors. So I am so excited to work this up. And then there's also some Regia Perfect. And I've been wanting, I've used Regia before, but I have never done the Perfect and I've been wanting to try it. So I am really excited about this one as well. So a huge thank you for just the generous outpouring of love that I feel like I've received lately from makers, viewers, Y'all are just amazing. And I, I feel like I've said this so much this podcast, but I am just feeling so overwhelmed in a great, great way with all of the love and support that I have gotten here lately with this podcast. It is just absolutely amazing. I, again, I'm enjoying this so much and I love being able to do this and share my knitting crafting world and connect with like-minded people who are equally knitting and yarn obsessed as I am. So this is just wonderful, you guys. Thank you again. Um, I do want to give a huge thank you to returning viewers. Thank you for coming back to check out the podcast and a very big welcome to new viewers. I hope that you enjoyed the podcast. And if you did, be sure to hit subscribe so that you can be notified when new videos come out. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the podcast. That helps it get out there in the recommended area on YouTube to viewers so that more people can find us. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Normally I end with some chatter, but I don't really have a whole heck of a lot to chat about today. It's still summer break here and we're just enjoying the pool and Austin's basketball is coming to an end. Um, yeah, we're kind of, I feel like after 4th of July, the summer kind of switches and you kind of change gears to Okay, school's coming up. Um, the boys do start school fairly early here in the middle of August. Their charter school starts. The public school starts a little bit later in the month, I think the end of August, but I believe they start either the 14th or the 15th. I think, I know it's mid-August. So yeah, I feel like after the 4th, we kind of change gears and it's like, okay, it's time to start getting ready for the school year. Start thinking about school supplies and backpacks and all of that fun stuff and squeezing in those last little things that you want to get done that maybe you haven't done yet this summer um, as far as places you want to go and things. So yeah, we're just enjoying our summer, relaxing. And that's, yeah, I just don't have a whole heck of a lot to chat about today. I've been doing a ton of knitting and enjoying it and loving it. I've been working out quite a bit and I'm actually as crazy as it sounds enjoying that as well. I find I have so much more energy when I stick with working out. So 
I've been doing that and Austin's been my little workout buddy while I've been working out. And Wyatt's standing here staring at me. What about me wanting a cat? Oh, and Wyatt wants a cat. You do Guys, too, yeah. I do too. We've been on a cat kick and I don't know why, but he really wants a cat. He's always really wanted a cat. I don't know what I'm saying. Always. But lately we've both been kind of on the wanting a cat kick. But... A few years, don't step on that baby, you're shaking the camera. You wanna come over here? No. Come on, come over here and sit on my lap while we talk about cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all they're gonna get? Come here. Mm -hmm. He's been wanting a cat, but a few years ago, he had to have allergy testing done when we lived in Arizona because his allergies just went completely berserk with the desert stuff that's out there, which you would not think, but it does. There's mesquite trees and all kinds of stuff that's not on the East Coast that this child is highly allergic to. But anyways, when they did that, they tested for cats because we kind of suspected he had a bit of a sensitivity to cats and he tested slightly allergic on the lower end. He was not highly allergic, but it did come back a mild positive is what I would say. Um, so we have not gotten a cat and because Austin always had problems with cats as well when he was younger because we did have cats and we had to get rid of one of them. And um, yeah, so... He wants a cat, I want a cat, but we don't want him to be miserable if we get a cat. So yes, that's what he's talking about with wanting a cat. Okay, but anyways, I think that's all I've got for today. Wyatt, you're really not gonna come say hi? I did. He did, he says, okay. So that's all I've got for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me for episode 26. I appreciate it. Be sure to head over to the Ravelry group let me know what you think about the new knit along idea. I'm really excited about um, seeing you guys try some new sock techniques or patterns or heels or whatever the case may be. I just obviously love socks, hence the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. So yes, let me know what you think about the knit along. Be sure to head over to the Ravelry group and get entered in the 2,500 subscriber giveaway. And I will see you guys in a few weeks. Bye.